Hi, this is Rich Ustavsky. The date is February 7th, 2015, and today I'm here with Tim Fox, and he was nice enough to say he would sit down and chat with us as part of the Center for Middletown Studies High School Consolidation Oral History Project. And Tim, I was wondering if you could start by um, just telling us a little bit about yourself, your um, address, your age, your occupation. Yeah, uh, my name's Tim Fox. Uh, I live at 2612 West Purdue in Muncie. I'm a college professor. I've taught at Anderson University. I'm in my 17th year there, okay. and I'm currently the department chair of the Department of Modern Foreign Languages and Cultures. Okay, very and, nice. And I'm 50, almost 55 years old. Kind of okay. scary. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll just jump right in here with the big question. Um, what are your thoughts and opinions on the high school consolidation here in Muncie? Uh, it's one of those things that I think um, eventually was going to happen mm -hmm. just because of, of the loss of tax base, the loss of population in Muncie, um, and just shrinking resources overall. So I, I think it's it was something that was coming down the pike that we were going to have as a, as a city we we're going to have to deal with eventually. Um, in all honesty, uh, it was something they maybe should have began the process a bit earlier, mm -hmm. maybe several years earlier. Uh, but I think given the, the overall circumstances and um, kind of the way things occurred um, with the process, I think they did about as well as they probably could on, on, on at least overall looking at the consolidation. Certainly there were some things they could have done better, but okay. I think overall, I think it went about as well as it probably could. Okay. So you said something about, um, the fact that it maybe should have happened a couple of years earlier. Well, why mm -hmm. do you think it happened when it did? Um, well, one of the things, and, and maybe backtracking a bit, um, a good number of years ago, they, they decided to sink money into several different schools in town, and I won't go into specifics, but okay. they had closed some elementary schools uh, and then were investing more money in, in a number of other um, schools. And perhaps at that point, it might have been when they maybe had a bit more money mm -hmm. um, and could have uh, done a few things maybe a bit more creatively. Um, might have been a, a good time to do that but I know it's it's there's never a perfect time and there's and you know you're always going to have people that are upset and I remember at that point there were there were folks understandably from from the elementary schools that were being closed that were really really upset about that um, and you know certainly looking at Muncie when we moved here for example one of the reasons we moved to this neighborhood was because it had a neighborhood school mm -hmm. and that was very important to us and the reason, one of the reasons we bought this house is because we can walk out on our front porch and watch our kids walk in the front door of the elementary school. Yeah. And plus, the elementary school had a really good reputation. So, um, so I understand that in, in terms of the of people's feelings and thoughts uh, with with school consolidation and with closing schools. Um, but I, I do think it was something that maybe had they been a little more forward thinking, mm -hmm. it was something that could have happened earlier, um, and maybe with. Uh, with maybe a bit less of a sense of desperation, and we have to do sure. this, and and we have to do this now, and so forth, that maybe they they could have pooled or or kind of uh, channeled some funds um, into other areas or other ways that that would have been uh, more helpful in the long run for for Muncie, and and maybe not sunk. I don't know how many, I don't know if it's millions or whatever into, for example, Wilson. Yeah. Um, and then uh, now it's a school that's sitting vacant, that sort of thing. That, or you know, even some of the some of the um, and I'll you know people get upset at me probably for saying this, but um, when when they were closing some of the elementary elementary schools and really between uh, Northview and Mitchell, I kept thinking one of those two they're probably going to close because they're so close to each other. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I don't know, may, maybe there were too many children to to go to just one, um, but. Anyway, that was that was another thought that I had. I didn't want that to happen, but mm -hmm. I thought if they're if we're looking, and I know and I know we'll get into this a bit later of kind of this rivalry between North Side and mm -hmm. South Side, and um, you know I know the South Side people often feel like they're the ones that always take the hit and that sort of thing, but uh, I, that was one thought that I had that 
that uh, that might have been something that could have been done at that point. Maybe again, maybe close Northview and and send all those kids to Mitchell if they would if they would you know fit. Uh, and if it was something that could be done, be done well, and also at the same time not have 40 kids in a classroom, because that's that's another aspect that's important for my wife and I, both of us as educators, that mm-hmm. through this consolidation, that it didn't turn into a thing where all of a sudden we're taking two high schools, putting them in one place, and there's going to be 40 to 50 kids in a classroom, because yeah. that that's just not conducive to good teaching or learning. Well, it's interesting that you said that about the elementary schools over here, because there were several speakers at the town hall meetings leading up to the consolidation. They said, you know, if we want to cut costs, close elementary schools on the north side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's, um, at, at the time, and, and honestly, at that point, and I went to a good number of those town hall meetings mm-hmm. uh, and school board meetings, and, you know, really... For for one thing, at that time, Mitchell was was one of the top elementary schools in in town. And to me, um, I thought if if we have to close something here, let's not close what's working and what's doing well. Sure. Let's close, you know, schools that maybe are having some difficulty or where there is uh, a large decrease in enrollment. But but still, I you know that was something that did cross my mind about you know maybe we can close one on the north side, but. Mm-hmm. To go back just to establish your connection with the schools in the community, mm-hmm. you have a son that is I, a senior yeah. at Muncie Central? Mm-hmm. Okay. We've had two children that have gone K-12 through 12 through Muncie schools. Okay. Um, and I can honestly say that they, they've both had really, really good experiences mm-hmm. in terms of the academics, uh, in terms of the extracurricular activities, um, and kind of all the added things that that have gone along with that um, in terms of experiences that they've been able to have because of uh, really good teachers, dedicated teachers, uh, but also people who did creative things. And, and I know the, the kids, the kids that go to Mitchell uh, elementary, for example, they every year get to go to space camp. The fifth graders do. Uh, and the fourth graders go to Camp Crosley up in northern Indiana mm-hmm. for a couple of days and get to spend the night, which is a really cool experience for those kids, and maybe some of whom uh, wouldn't get to go up and go to lakes in northern Indiana and get to you know go out in a canoe and, and do all the outdoors woodsy stuff that they, that they do when they go up there. Yeah. And it's also, and I think it really, that really helps build a sense of, of class and, and community really mm-hmm. among among the kids, they don't necessarily see it that way, but I know that they have very fond memories of those things, of going to space camp. Um, and they're, they're wonderful teachers, you know, like Mr. Pertlebaugh, just to name one, and, and, and so many others. That um, And another thing was they did the electronic field trip actually through Ball State, they, and I don't know if they're still doing that here, but that was I think that was uh, funded by a grant. Uh, but... Our oldest son, Nathaniel, was was one who was fortunate to be chosen to go on one of the electronic field trips, which was basically something uh, based in 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 the science. Uh, it played off the science curriculum, but it was basically the students had to propose some sort of uh, science or do a science presentation, uh, and then they were. It was a competitive thing, and then I don't remember. It was two or three students were chosen each year then to go to this electronic field trip. What well, was interesting, they called it electronic, but it wasn't like they were just doing something online or anything mm-hmm. like that. It, 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 the, in in the, f- the first year that I remember, they went out to San Francisco oh. and studied some uh, different habitats in San Francisco Bay in terms oh. of uh, the, the marine life and, and so forth. this is in grade school? And this is in fifth grade, yeah. And, that, and honestly, I can say that was one of those things that really uh, those added things, I think those creative things that unfortunately we're getting too far away from nowadays with the focus on, on testing and, and all this kind of nonsense, and I do think it's nonsense, um, that for me that was this type of thing that really turned kids on, mm-hmm. that really made education, um, and, in that, and in that case science, really exciting and something mm-hmm. that kids wanted to pursue. And you said, and, and, you and said my you, son, and my son, I can, and I can honestly say, my son now, who is my older son, who's a junior at, at DePaul, mm-hmm. is studying biology, and I know his love and interest in science started at that point, from from having that experience at Mitchell School, 
and, uh, and then also having great science teachers at Northside and then at, at Muncie Central. So, and and I know that's uh, anyway, that's that's anecdotal, but that no, that's uh, from from our experience. That that's just kind of uh, an example of, of some of the really positive uh, experiences that that my children, our children, have had uh, going through Muncie schools. Yeah. Um, let's see, where are we now? Well, I w I just wanted to get on the record too um, about your wife. You said she teaches in the school, mm -hmm. the schools too. What, what does she teach? Um, my wife is a Spanish teacher at Delta High School. Okay, okay. Um, and you you are obviously situated on the north side of town. Mm -hmm. I'd say northwest to be more specific. And I, I don't know if you want to say that there was a certain voice that was um, speaking for the north side of town in this decision-making process, but do you feel like your voice was heard or north, the north side of town's voice was heard in the decision-making process leading up to consolidation? Yeah, I, I really think it was. Um, and I, I went to the meetings, and, I, and I, I'll have to admit, too, I mean, we, we've had the advantage, too, of we've known a lot of people on the school board and... Um, kind of had a relationship through through other venues with a number of people on the school board to where we we had their ear and we could tell them you know what we thought you uh, personally, and I, but I personally, personally yeah okay my wife and I personally but I I really think they did take input but I I really think there was there was kind of already an idea they knew what they were going to do um but uh are you saying from the get-go they knew uh, pretty much I think I mean okay. they they took input but I think they knew what what their options were and what they were going to have to do, and it was basically just trying to sell that okay. to, I mean, and I'm not saying that in a negative, I'm just saying that I think there were just some realities for them there that this is what we have to do, this is what we think makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. um, I wondered though when they, when they came out with the different options of maybe um, turning both high schools into middle school slash high school seven through 12. yeah seven through okay. through 12 I, I I thought about that for a while and I thought that that might not be you know if if financially it's something they can do that might not be a, a bad option but I don't know certainly how all that would have played out but um, the 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 interesting thing is and and I know that it's this has kind of been the the uh, thing a lot of people have said and I've heard since the consolidation uh, became a discussion was uh, that you know the kids won't have a problem the kids will get along and it's it's just the parents and those who are who are highly invested in mm -hmm. you know the the traditions of the north side or the south side or yeah. the the rebels and the rebel band and or um, and, and I think it really has played out that way. And, and I've talked to my son, who's currently a senior at, mm -hmm. at Central, and he said there really hasn't been this sort of, you know, rivalry or, the, you know, there was kind of this uh, uh, thing where, where people like, oh, there are going to be fights and there's going to be this, and, and none of that's happened. Um, and it's certainly, I think the transition uh, has gone in terms of the, the students coming into the school and, and kind of becoming part of what goes on at Central and, and feeling ownership or at least from what I see where they're you know they're really becoming involved mm -hmm. um, you know I, I think that's gone well and I know again anecdotally but the the kids that have come in to play tennis for example um, from Southside and just kind of jumped right in and were, were part of the team and I know certainly I think that and I was really happy about this that the central band did so well and and I knew I mean Southside had such a great band tradition, marching mm -hmm. band tradition, and and Central was on its way up. So I thought that that was really, uh, they really set the tone. I think for the rest of the school in terms of, uh, of uh, you know showing hey you know we can get together on this and we can we can be successful we can do well, and we can we can invest in each other and see you know without sounding too jingoistic or whatever to say we yeah. can be one muncie so to speak yeah. we can yeah. we can make this happen and make it happen in in good and positive ways and so i was really excited and and i know a lot of people were but but i was really pleased plus both my sons had had played at one time or another in the in the central band mm -hmm. um and um oh goodness what's the band director's name um 
Arnett, Mr. Claire Arnett. Arnett. Yeah, Clay Arnett. Um, and the, uh, he's just, he's, he's an amazing, amazing educator and uh, really gets the, the students that are in band just in, really enthusiastic about being in band, about being part of that group and about uh, playing well their instruments and, and, and playing well as a group. Uh, and you know he's got he's got the hardware to to prove it because they've won a lot of band contests mm -hmm. and they've they've certainly the won the state and marching band. Um, but he's another one of those educators that I point to and say you know this this is this is one of the best and brightest of 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 Muncie Muncie Community Schools faculty that has has walked the walk and talked the talk and 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 is representative of really the best that that Muncie Schools offers in in, in terms of of uh, things that we can hang our hat on. So, um, and he's not the only one, you know, and I'm, I, I probably tend to be more a cheerleader for, you know, for, for the Muncie schools and so forth. And I recognize that, are, you know, they, they've had problems and have problems. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I think too often, uh, particularly the local press has been just happy to just pile on anytime, anything that can be remotely yeah. interpreted as negative. Um, <laughs> Uh, about the schools and the school system and so forth. And some of it occasionally certainly has been um, merited that they've done something stupid or something's happened and or you know a teacher's done something really dumb um, or or very unprofessional and they should be called on it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think a lot of times there there has been a sense of of kind of I don't want to say witch hunt, but um, where there any small thing like there was something bad happened at Central and all of a sudden it's on the front page of the paper. Um, and I don't know if it always, it always merits that, but anyway. No, going off of that, would you say that, because a couple of other speakers have kind of touched on this and they said that the perception of the Muncie school system is worse than the reality of the Muncie school system. Would you agree with that statement? Yeah, in general I would. Um, that, and, and again, based on, you know, based on, uh, the, the experiences of my own children, mm -hmm. um, you know, and they've had they've had bad experiences, but their experiences in in Muncie schools have largely been very positive, uh, and so I, I think Muncie schools does get a bad rap sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it's not to say, like I said, that that uh, there haven't been some <clears throat> individually and corporately some some bad decisions made or some um, some missteps happen. Um, but overall, I think given the circumstances, both in terms of economics and demographics, uh, and changes going on in, in our community, I think they've, they've done, they've done a pretty good job. Okay. Now you got, you got at this a little bit earlier when you were saying that there's kind of a generational gap, um, in terms of how people approach this, the kids have got pretty much got along fine, but it was the parents that expressed concern. Mm -hmm. And we definitely heard that and what people had to say at the town hall meetings. Why, why do you think that is? Why do you think there's that differential? I don't know. I, 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 since I've been here, and, and I've, I mean, we're in our 17th year living in Muncie, mm -hmm. and we've always had since we came in, and we're, we, we're both graduates of Ball State, but at that point we really weren't aware of kind of the dynamics of, of city politics and, and rivalry and that sort of thing. But um, since we've lived here, certainly we've been aware that there's always been this sense of, of disenfranchisement, if you want to call it that, um, on the south side that somehow... You know, all the investment comes on the north side, mm -hmm. and all the, um, you know, anytime there's anything new, it comes to the north side, and that sort of thing. Um, and there may be some basis in reality for that, um, but uh, certainly when when the consolidation talk was coming up, and and uh, you know, I attended a good number of those town hall meetings, and yeah, there were there's a lot of a lot of passion, uh, particularly among the the folks from, from the South side about Definitely. that. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I really, I'm sure there's historical reasons for that and maybe, maybe some economic as well. Um, and I don't know. And I, I, I think in recent years, they've, 
when I say they, the Muncie development folks and business leaders have tried to give more um, emphasis to kind of bolstering the South Side, you know, with the, the Walmart down mm -hmm. there and some new some new businesses and shopping and restaurants and things. Uh, and I, I, that's great. That's great. Um, but really beyond that, you know, I, I think I'm just I'm just treading water here yeah, in terms yeah, of, yeah. of knowing much of, of the reasons for the rivalry. And, you know, part of it may be from high school athletics and um, band contests and, I don't know, maybe back in the Back in the 60s, the, you know, families that half the family went to Southside, half the family went to Northside or, or, or well, it wouldn't have been Northside then, but Muncie Central and mm -hmm. kind of this sense of even rivalry within families kind of a thing. That, and it may go back to some of that too. Um, and certainly hear a lot of that from the old timers that, yeah. you know, that have, that have been in Muncie for, you know, since forever. So. so maybe the division in town is more symbolic and less real? Is that kind of what you're getting at? Or do you see a real division, well, there, there, a certain separation? No, what's in, this is interesting, and everything. I don't know why everything I talk about it eventually goes back to sports. But um, my uh, both my boys played baseball, and my younger one played baseball for a good number of years, little league, and he mm -hmm. played with kids for basically from t-ball up, kids from every side of Muncie. Mm -hmm. uh, and what was interesting was a lot of the kids he played baseball with were kids from the South Side. I don't know they're. they're the north side kids played, but it just seemed like he, he always got on teams with kids from the south side, and they always got along wonderfully and had, you know, um, had a lot of fun and, and learned the game. And, and we met a lot of the parents that way, too, and a lot of uh, folks that, that, are, that are from the south side. And, and uh, I, you know, I would occasionally hear, you know, kind of this sense of rivalry from them, but I, it was never anything that meant anything to me. I didn't grow up in Muncie, so... Um, but I think th there's there's something in the air, something in the culture of Muncie that that uh, you know that that whether it's real or imaginary, f f particularly for people on the south side, they they really think it exists. They really feel like. Well, maybe, maybe I'll throw out this theory because it's been tossed out before. But the, the, would you say that there might be a socioeconomic divide? Yeah, I almost definitely would, and I think part of it. Um, and, and certainly not not getting into stereotypes or anything mm -hmm. like that, but um, that the south side of Muncie and and you would probably know certainly more about this than I would in, in studying you know the the socioeconomic history of of Muncie, but uh, that the south side economically, at least to me, is, has always seemed to be um, a bit more depressed certainly than the north side, um, and maybe if we go back. You know, into the 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 boom years of Muncie when you know Chevy was here and GM and all the other factories. It may not have been that way, but I don't know. So. Okay, no, I think that's a good point, and this kind of leads to another question um, that I was going to ask you, and that's: Do you see um, do you see the feelings and emotions? You know that the Southsiders. Um, was evident from the Southsiders at the town hall meetings. Do you see that as kind of part of this deindustrialization process that kind of hit the South Side the hardest? And then when you have the high school closing, that's just one more thing mm -hmm. that w that was kind of taken away from them, yeah. their way of life. Yeah, but that's and now that you you know you mentioned that, and I I really think there there is a certain amount of that in. Uh, in what we've what we've seen and experienced, and and it might be kind of and if I and I'm trying to say this as as gently as I can, mm -hmm. kind of a, a lower middle class and working class, not just angst but anger in terms mm -hmm. of of yeah loss of livelihood, loss of the way of life that we've known, where you could go to maybe not even graduate high school and then go get a factory job and make good money, and afford to you know take vacations and buy a camper and buy a boat and go to Florida for vacation and all those sorts of things that um, have become harder and harder, if not in some cases almost impossible, because of the loss of the manufacturing, the good-paying manufacturing jobs. Um, and whether that's you know on the south side or you know you just about these days name your name your location. But. Sure. Okay. 
Switching topics just a little bit, but what role do you think a high school plays in a community's identity? Um, I think it's very important. So, and, and sometimes I think people with all the digital stuff now and, you know, people are so distracted really with, mm -hmm. um, and with uh, whatever's going on on the internet and YouTube and, and Facebook and, and whatnot that, um, that it seems like people are less engaged. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I'm not blaming it just on, on the internet or anything like that, but um, people are, it seems like people are, that plus, um, in general, people I, I find are working longer hours, having you know, to do more just to to make a living and and uh, so forth. So they're focused that, in one sense, maybe they don't have the leisure time that they used to, um, or they have to use leisure time in other ways. Mm -hmm. um, and and I think as a result, uh, it might impact how invested people are in their high school but i still think the high school is very very important i do it may be for other people it's not um but to me it, it's kind of in many ways the standard bearer of your community particularly as as you know your your students you know go out and represent your town mm -hmm. in other venues whether that's sports or band or whether that's um like academic team uh those sorts of things that um you know that they really af affect the the reputation that your that your community has, and maybe that's that's much more that's a bit antiquated um, uh, a perspective. But I I, I still think um, it does play a does play an important role in the way your community is viewed outside your community. Yeah. Um, if your kids, you know, if your kids in a in a given activity are are known for being really good sports and good you know, citizens and that sort of thing. People know that. And if your kids are really bad sports or they cheat or they're, you know, that sort of thing, people, you know, that reputation sure. uh, is known. So I think that does affect uh, the way a school is viewed. Now within Muncie itself, um, you know, I really, you know, I, again, I'm, I may not be the best person to ask on this because I've always, you know, I, I've, again, because my wife and I are educators, uh, we, uh, you know, we try to invest as much as we can in our local school, both through, um, you know, helping out with whatever's going on at the school and, and also, you know, trying to encourage not just our kids, but other kids to do well uh, and to be involved. Um, and so um, it is it is important to us and, and certainly other people may not be that invested in it and or. Um, one of the things I've noticed, and this again, this is this is just my my opinion, is that oftentimes once, and I and I, I hope and pray I don't get this way, but once people's kids are out of school, they mm -hmm. they completely disengage, or they don't care. Well, my kids are out, so I don't care that the schools mm -hmm. can go to heck, and I don't care. Uh, and I and I think that's that's really a bad, uh, that's bad for that's bad for Muncie, that's bad for certainly for families and for schools, and you know certainly you know this if. If the schools aren't good and attractive, um, and you know, seen as being really top-notch, cutting-edge, you know, throw in whatever adjective you want there, uh, that you're not going to attract investment to your community. Exactly. You're not going to attract, you know, people that want to come and, and move to Muncie, live in Muncie, um, send their kids to school here. Um, so it, it is important the, the the reputation of a school. Um, is very important in the school system. So I'm, I'm going to agree with you on that. Mm -hmm. And um, kind of going off of that, why, why would you say, or I mean, why, why would you suppose that the business community didn't have a bigger involvement if we say that is the case, that a good school system attracts investment in business? Why didn't the business community have, have more involvement in the consolidation process or try to have a certain amount of impact? I don't know. I, I don't, and I don't know with, and, and I know that the school got a lot, got, well, I shouldn't say a lot, got some local grants, mm -hmm. some donations and things from 
and a couple of foundations, I think. Ball and I'm not, Foundation. Yeah, Ball yeah. Foundation, I know, uh, donated a, a, a good chunk of money mm -hmm. that was used for various things. And I, and I might debate a bit of what they spent that money on, but okay. Okay. Um, um, they did get some local, some local funding. Um, I don't know, I don't know how appropriate, and maybe it would be, but I don't know how appropriate it would be for local business to do that at, at the same time with shrinking tax base. I'm like, fine, you know, we'll, you know, if so-and-so Chevrolet wants to donate a car to the carpool of Muncie Community Schools, let them do it. If, yeah. Yeah. you know, if, uh, if Pepsi wants to sponsor Bearcat Athletics and give a couple hundred thousand dollars or something, let them do it. We'll mm -hmm. put a Pepsi scoreboard on there. I'm, I'm, uh, you know that that may be flagrant advertising for Pepsi, but yeah. but at the same time, I'm like, if the tax base isn't there, and we've got to find funding mm -hmm. so that we can have the programs that will attract uh, families and 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 kids, then you know, I'm I'm willing to do that, particularly when when and I don't get too too off on a tangent yeah, here, fine. but when uh, when our tax system allows people and particular particularly corporations to to maybe not pay the the amount and the kind of taxes that mm -hmm. that need to be paid um, for for a community to thrive. Okay. Now, what did the, speaking in general terms and in a general sense, what effects do you think consolidation has had already and will have in the future? Um. I think this being toward the end of the first year after consolidation, um, I think people will, will look back and say, you know, it wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. okay. And in fact, the kids did pretty well. Um, it, it wasn't perfect, but it was probably about as good as it could go. And I think down the road, and there will always be people that are they're upset, they'll go to their grave upset that Muncie Southside was closed. Yeah. And I, and Probably it would be, and well, and there may be people to this day that are still angry that Northside High School, you know, was was closed and then turned into a middle school. Um, I haven't. I mean, I've I've heard some folks that were, you know, sad or a little bit upset about Northside being being closed, but uh, not not to the level of emotional um, investment or reaction that people. Um, certainly have, have expressed regarding uh, closing Southside, but but I think um, I think you know a couple years down the road, if things continue to go as well as they've had, and, and hopefully even improve in terms of um, both what's happening at the school and how it is assessed um, in comparison to what it's done in the past, and and, and maybe in comparison to other schools. Um, one thing, if I can get on my soapbox for a minute. That, right. that, that really um, kind of has irked me is that um, Muncie Central is a school and the Muncie Community School has basically been a system that we took anybody. We, I mean, in some ways we maybe feel like we have to because just the way the, the, the money is distributed yeah. based on, you know, the money goes with this child, you know, $5,000, $6,000, uh, whatever it is. Um, and there are a lot of area schools that don't, other area schools that, don't do that. They will not take anybody. Uh, so I and I really think it's 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 more than a bit unjust to compare schools that have to take everybody mm -hmm. with schools that can pick and choose um, in terms of you know this is an A school and that's a C school and and that yeah. sort of thing. You're you're comparing apples and oranges. Okay. Um, and again, mostly because of socioeconomic reasons. You know, certainly stu students that come from families that can give them a lot of opportunities. Um, will tend to do better than those that, that come from little to no opportunity um, and on whatever socioeconomic rung you know they yeah. may come from so anyway I'm off my soapbox. No, you're fine. Um, this is my last formal question then I'll let you add anything you want to but um, what advice would you give to children go growing up in Muncie today who are living in the city as it is and the school system as it is? Okay, could you repeat that? Sure, yeah. What advice would you give to children growing up in Muncie today who are living in the city as it is and the school system as it is? Um, or maybe to personalize it, what, what advice did you, did you give to your son or what kind of well, advice did you have? 
I think we've tried to give our, our children, and I mean, and this is, I think most, I think most parents would say, is to make sure you take, challenge yourself, take hard classes, be involved uh, in activities that, that interest you, um, be committed to your school, um, take part in all the things that you possibly can, um, have as broad of an experience as you can, um, and you know, and, and I think Muncie Central certainly has a track record of, of students coming out and going to just about anywhere in terms of college. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, going to really prestigious schools and going to, you know, the, certainly um, good schools all throughout Indiana um, in terms of, of college. So, uh, but my advice would be that, just that. Um, challenge yourself um, and, and parents certainly support your kids and, and if they need, if, they, if they're not getting, getting it in the classroom, you know, get them help. And I think oftentimes um, parents are, and maybe because they're so, they're working a couple of jobs or they're, they're busy or they're, they're just not that engaged with what's going on in the, in the day to day lives of their, of their children in terms of their schoolwork. But if they need a tutor, if they need help, get it. You know, find somebody, the school, all, schools always have people that'll, that'll tutor or they'll find somebody. So um, that would be, and, and your kids, and, and I, I'm, I'm old fashioned enough to, to still believe in a certain sense that if kids are bound and, and determined to achieve and work hard uh, and, um, you know, have some dreams. I know it's kind of hard, <laughs> kind of in the educational environment maybe now with the focus on testing, but if they, if they really dream and work hard and study uh, and challenge themselves, they can do impressive things they can do good things uh, and they can they can have options um, my other thing and 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 I say that and, and I hope um, and I truly hope that you know Muncie can can get some good momentum as a city um, can in, in attract the sorts of, of investment and um, businesses and institutions and I know Ball State does a great job of this and mm -hmm. really works very hard to make to make Muncie a a place that is attractive, uh, but if 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 Muncie as a as a community can do that, um, then it is a place that that I think can be um, attractive and and uh, have a successful future. Um, on the other hand, um, and and if you know it, as well as being a cheerleader, though I've I've also kind of got to give the other side of things. You know I've I've. You know, we've told our, our children essentially that, you know, unless once you graduate from college and graduate school and whatever, unless they're standing at the gates of Muncie with a contract that's going to pay you a really good salary where you can really have a great uh, standard of living and something you really enjoy doing, you're passionate about, I don't care if you never come back to Muncie. Yeah. You know, and that's that may sound horrible, um, but I think we've also tried to inculcate in our kids a really broader vision of the world and, sure. and, and seeing all of the amazing opportunities and amazing places that there are out there. And Muncie's a great place. I mm -hmm. mean, it, they're wonderful. That's what Muncie's got going for it. A lot of wonderful people, uh, really friendly, caring people. Um, but, you know, they're, Muncie, Muncie needs a shot in the arm. Um, and that may be little by little, that may be, or may, hopefully it does happen. But uh, nonetheless, you know, we've told our kids that you know, look at the world beyond Muncie, um, and and th they're well aware of that. So I, I don't say that to badmouth Muncie necessarily, but just simply that look at Muncie as one option among many, 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 many that you hopefully will have um, in life, and and certainly the world's a lot bigger than this. But um, and I know I've been going on and on, so. Um, I'll just wrap up with saying I, I want the best for Muncie. I want the best for Muncie schools. Um, you know, my kids will be out of Muncie schools as of June of 2015, but I, I'll continue to, to, to care uh, about the, the progress and the, the success of Muncie schools. Um, I'll be as engaged as I'm able to be in terms of, of school activities and helping with things. Um, but, uh, you know, people, everybody has to do their part. Yeah. You know, and and that also includes that does include the business leaders and so forth that need to say we do care enough about um, Muncie and Muncie schools that we're willing to invest both time and resources and so forth. 
to make it what make them what they can be. And it also uh, is really incumbent on the, who's, who's ever on the school board to think of the best interest of the school, not uh, not think in terms of. Um, I'm sure you've heard so many people talk about nepotism and all those sorts of things within Muncie, you know, Muncie schools, Muncie school board, Muncie politics. Um, but we've got to get beyond that. And we, we've got to have a bigger vision of ourselves and a bigger vision of, of, of what Muncie can be um, and what Muncie schools can be. And so in some ways, I'm kind of excited about the things that, that have been in the paper recently about looking at maybe uh, different sorts of programs or focuses that a particular school may have. This one may focus on foreign language. That one may focus on technology or, mm -hmm. or whatever it may be. And that might be an exciting sort of thing, uh, an opportunity for Muncie. So... Anyway, thank you, Rich. I appreciate okay. you yeah, talking to me today. I don't know if you have any other questions. No, I, I was just going to conclude with um, giving the floor to you and saying you could add anything that, that if you wanted to, but... Yeah, at this point, I'd probably just be redundant, so Okay, thank perfect. You. Well, thank you, Tim. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. Just hit that same button. Yeah.